This is insane. NASA just made the final decision to bring the Boeing Starliner back from ISS. And well, they will put our astronauts in dangerous situations once again on leaked Starliner instead of asking SpaceX Dragon to help. NASA's latest update revealed that the Starliner teams are assessing the impact that five helium leaks would have on the remainder of the mission. While Starliner is docked, all the manifolds are closed per normal mission operations, preventing helium loss from the tanks, the space agency wrote. The helium leaks that were detected in early May delayed the first crewed launch to June. The June 5 Starliner launch date would have been postponed again if NASA's Go Fever disease hadn't recurred. Go Fever caused a horrible obsession for everybody in the shuttle's era and was the main culprit in claiming the lives of 17 NASA astronauts. And now it's coming back. Back in Starliner, NASA and Boeing eventually decided the leak was an issue that could be lived with. As a result, the stressful helium leak saga on Starliner continues as the crew capsule develops more leaks in its service module. So far, there are five helium leaks in total, not to mention the potential leaks in the future. At this point, I wish I could see the tense face of NASA's manager, Steve Stitch, who used to declare eloquently that we can handle this particular leak if that leak rate were to grow even up to 100 times. <laughs> The reality is tougher than he predicted. In addition to one leak spotted before launch, there were two new leaks on the spacecraft after it launched on June 5th, and a fourth leak was found after docking. NASA closed the helium manifolds in the propulsion system after docking to stop the leaks, although they will have to be open to use the spacecraft's thrusters for undocking and deorbit maneuvers. And recently, the fifth one was detected as engineers work to prepare the vehicle for its return to Earth in the third week of June. Although these leaks occur at a small rate, many a little make mickle, Starliner will not have enough helium to have a safe re-entry. For those who don't know, helium is used in the spacecraft's thruster systems to allow the thrusters to fire without being combustible or toxic. Despite the leaks suggesting a larger issue with Starliner's propulsion system, NASA never seemed to lose its inherent optimism. It still completely believes in its commercial partner and is downplaying the spacecraft's anomalies. Engineers evaluated the helium supply based on current leak rates and determined that Starliner has plenty of margins to support the return trip from the station, NASA wrote in its update. Only seven hours of free flight time is needed to perform a normal end of mission, and Starliner currently has enough helium left in its tanks to support 70 hours of free flight activity following undocking. This means that Wilmore and Williams are once again in a dangerous situation. A normal end of mission is something that is a proud achievement for Boeing Starliner and a big win for NASA, but it is just one of the basic requirements for Crew Dragon and NASA's commercial programs. It's so funny that while Dragon has made 42 visits to the ISS, Starliner has been grappling with its incompetence despite eating a billion dollars of Congress's budget. The blunder that doomed Starliner's first docking opportunity was an embarrassing one for both NASA and Boeing. In a press statement, NASA called the orbit off nominal, space speak for no good. At least this troubled spacecraft also landed safely two days later in New Mexico but it was within gunshot of a NASA investigation, which then enumerated 80 corrective actions to software, hardware, testing protocols, peer reviews, and more. The second docking attempt on June 6 is praised as a success, but it follows the failure of five of 28 spacecraft thrusters during its approach, and four were subsequently recovered, extending Starliner's stay date on ISS until June 18th or even further allows the mission team members to continue to analyze that thruster's past performance, and they plan to put it and the others to the test near the end of the mission. Ground teams plan to fire all 28 RCS thrusters after undocking to collect additional data signatures on the service module thrusters before the hardware is expended, NASA officials wrote in the update. As part of normal operations, the service module separates from the crew module on return, so NASA and Boeing will gather as much data as possible to aid in system assessments. Currently, while it's parked outside the ISS, engineers are evaluating an RCS oxidizer isolation valve in the service module that's not properly closed. An RCS, or reaction control system, uses thrusters for attitude control and steering, 
while the oxidizer isolation valve regulates the flow of oxidizer, which is essential for burning fuel in the thrusters. Mission managers are continuing to work through the return plan, which includes assessments of flight rationale, fault tolerance, and potential operational mitigations for the remainder of the flight, the space agency wrote. Wilmore and Williams, meanwhile, have been evaluating their Boeing Blue spacesuits and Starliner seats for fit, comfort, and functionality, and assessing the airflow aboard the capsule. Boeing's new spacesuit may look stylish as hell, but it's not completely safe. During the June 1st countdown, about 15 minutes before the scheduled launch time, the air circulating fans in the astronauts' spacesuits malfunctioned. They've also powered the capsule down and back up again and conducted safe haven checks, which are designed to show that a docked spacecraft can serve as a refuge for astronauts in the event of an emergency aboard the ISS. So, it can be said that, for the return trip home this time, astronauts should check much more cautiously in every corner of the vehicle and of their spacesuit. All would be paid off by a sense of relief. When Starliner does come home, it will touch down on terra firma in the southwestern U.S., NASA officials have said. Far different from today's bruised Boeing image, the Boeing of more than 10 years ago was iconic of the aerospace industry, an invincible monument. Starliner started off on the right foot in NASA's 2014 commercial crew program as it was the congressional appropriator's pet. Charles Bolden, former NASA administrator, and Lori Garver, former NASA deputy administrator, once stated, that Congress would never have approved the commercial crew program had Boeing not been one of the participants. Boeing has provided space hardware since the Apollo program. It's the prime contractor for the International Space Station, taking charge of the design and construction of all the major U.S. elements, and is currently responsible for sustaining engineering, as well as ensuring the successful integration of new vehicle systems, avionics, and payload hardware and software. It partly explains why, despite the several scandals on Starliner and the company itself, Congress and NASA cannot cancel the contract, at least for now. Additionally, Boeing is the prime contractor for the design, development, testing, and production of the SLS core stage, upper stages, and flight avionics suite. The company is currently building the core stages for Artemis II, III, IV, and V, as well as the first exploration upper stage, which will replace the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage ICPS, in future Artemis missions. So, with such a wide influence, does it mean Boeing will be always an impregnable fortress, and young private companies like SpaceX will always take a back seat? In my view, although has a huge influence in Washington, that does not mean Boeing can be immortal regardless of the hurts that it has created for the U.S.'s budget. The reality has proven that nothing can stay forever, even the longest continuously operational spacecraft in human history, ISS, is about to crash. Why Boeing and its foolish Starliner project cannot? The upcoming removal of the ISS in exchange for the new commercial space station is truly a reminder that out with the old, in with the new. The wave of competent private companies will shipwreck the incompetent and milk the system. It's an unavoidable trend of the era. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.